Welcome to the Token Trans Podcast, where two token trans guys talk life, love, and getting high. Grab a J and join us. We do not condone the consumption of illicit activities with anyone under the age of 21. The following episode might contain discussions of things that might make some uncomfortable. Discussion of abuse, transphobia, and religion. Viewer discretion is advised. We do not condone the consumption of illicit substances for minors. Religion. Oh, my God. So, um, I was, what do I have? Okay, so, yeah. So, I was raised, like, Catholic Christian. My grandmother was, my grandmother (laughs) was a big, my grandmother, Kathleen, may she rest in peace. Um, she was a big influence religious-wise on the family, pretty much the only religious influence on the family. And she would, like, she really got off on dressing me up like a little girl. And um, the Easter Sunday was the big thing. I always got a new dress and lacy gloves and, like, a little gloves lacy too. hat. Yes, the la- Ooh, white I lacy gloves. gloves. That's tough. And it was hard being a toddler with white lacy gloves because I wanted to get dirty. <laughs> what about ketchup, Aaron? How am I supposed to dip my chicken nuggies with these lace gloves? <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> so I hated it. But, you know, I, I mean, I kind of liked it. I like getting dressed up. And those were clothes that I never wore any other time. So, you know, it was kind of fun. But I just didn't like the... The, like, pageantry of it all and the whole, like, getting paraded around to all my grandmother's friends, like, look at my baby. Look at how cute she is with a little skirt. We're going to church. (laughs) We're going to church in our skirts. We're going to church in our skirts. So, um, (laughs) she, she would take me to Sunday or, yeah, Sunday mass for Easter, right? I think that's what it's called. I don't know. (laughs) Anyway, that is when I got tricked. They tricked me and I don't appreciate it. And I still hold a grudge and, you know, I'm getting through it. But um, <laughs> exactly. I, I think I think my grudge is valid, but um, I'll leave that to you to decide. So <laughs> during the, the mass, the pastor guy, um, he like summoned all the children up for this one section to sit with him on the steps of the platform whatever is that thing is called um and he had a little a little tiny birthday cake or like an ice cream cake or something just like a tiny one and it had three candles on it and two of them were purple and white striped and one of them was solid purple and father said that uh father said that the solid purple candle was jesus and the two striped candles were the thieves that were crucified alongside him And so he lit the candles and then he was like, you know, what do you think happened when they got crucified? And uh, so he he blew them all out and all of them went out except for the solid purple one. And he was like, that's Jesus. He got resurrected. He came back to life just like that candle turned back on. It was just a fucking trick candle. But I was fucking four years old and I saw I saw the flame come back after getting blown out. And I was like, holy fucking shit. That's Jesus. Like, Jesus is right here with us in this birthday cake. He fucking came back to life, bro. Like, the, I literally just saw it with my own eyes. So, like, how is there truth to anything else? Like, how are there people that don't believe in Jesus when I literally just saw that shit? Did you, you see know? the candle you didn't? That's right, why yeah, that was proof to me. I go was see like, the candle. Exactly. <laughs> they didn't, you gotta go to church and see this fucking birthday cake. Like, <laughs> that shit will make you believe. <laughs> That's all it takes. So I didn't need to see anything else as far as I was concerned. That was the only way. And um, uh, so I got older and like, um, so I would go to Sunday school with my cousins and um, that was a weird experience. Uh, <laughs> oh, I forgot I told you about the the basement part. Do you remember the basement where we all went down in the basement in Sunday school? And oh my God. So <laughs> this one time, in Sunday school, we all went to the basement for an activity, and it was like a very dimly lit basement. And um, 
we all sat in a circle and took turns. We took our shoes and socks off and just sat in a circle. And there's this like a Tupperware, just like this storage tub filled with water and soap. And we took turns washing each other's feet, washing each other's bare feet. We were children being supervised by an adult to go down into the basement, sit in a circle and wash each other's bare feet in the dark. And it was supposedly supposed to be uh, us doing the thing that Jesus did, because I guess Jesus washed people's feet for something, some reason, like some kind of like, even though he's Jesus, king of the Jews, savior of man he's still on his hands and knees washing the dirt off your of your feet because he loves you or something like that so we should be doing that to each other and i'm just like i mean i don't love many people enough to wash man i have a thing about feet let me tell you i (laughs) do not I know. No, like we could do this another way. Many other ways to teach that that's less uncomfortable (laughs) for everyone. Right. Like, let's tie each other's shoes. I'll tie your shoe for you. So there was that, and then, um, oh yeah. So you know, like I grew up in an abusive household, like extremely abusive. I'm sure a lot of us have. (laughs) Um. So in that environment getting that kind of abuse with no outlet no help no sign of hope or escape except promise of moving out with my grandmother on my 18th birthday there's nothing like yep we gotta wait hold on till i'm 18 that's it i just gotta get there man (laughs) but when you're 12 that seems really far away especially when you're getting your head bashed in the stove you know so uh i i was just looking for any kind of comfort any kind of answers to anything why it was happening why my mother of all people the person who's supposed to love me the most was hurting me in this way um supposedly for no reason no matter what i did to correct my own behavior it was like i could not escape it and um my grandmother gave me a a little a little bible and um it was like in the in the like uh what's it called god damn it what are words i'm high um directory <laughs> in, in the directory table where they have contents. like it was just like if table of contents thank you so much <laughs> why couldn't i think of that You're fucking welcome. phrase in the table of contents it was like broken down by like issues that one could have and then where to find the verse or whatever that relates to that issue you were trying to find answers for so i would i had like highlighted like if you need help and like if you're being hurt and uh like like stuff like that and then i would go and i would read what it said to read but it didn't give me any fucking answers and i didn't understand what the hell it was saying it was just a bunch of names (laughs) you know and it was like called devotions right i guess that was to be the word I wasn't. I, I mean, maybe that I'm, I'm sure there's people who do find answers in these things. But as someone who was just given a Bible and goes to school every Easter or goes to uh, Sunday school and goes to, uh, you know, as Sunday school is just arts and crafts where you learned about, you know, the golden rule and, you know, treat people nice. It wasn't really much about the Bible. It was except like maybe b- b- pop culture knowledge about the Bible. You know, I would only go to church on easter with my grandmother and i would get so bored i'd fall asleep anyway like i didn't pay attention to this stuff so i did not know how to read a bible in a way to understand it or in a way to make it give me the answers or understand the answers it was trying to give me or get you out of that situation right i was being abused and i needed out and the bible didn't do that for me (laughs) and um i prayed i prayed a lot i really thought that if i if i prayed and if i If I, being the person praying, was someone that genuinely, truly, really needed the answers that I was praying for, 
I swore that I would get them. You know, like there's no way that God would ignore me. I'm a I'm a baby and I'm getting my head slammed in a stove door over and over and over again just because I didn't rinse out the Kool-Aid powder in the bottom of the stainless steel sink. Like and I'm praying for safety. I should get it. God will give me safety. I just have to keep praying. And he never fucking did. And like I mean, I appreciate people's faith in Christianity and stuff like on an individual basis. This isn't to say that I think that it as a whole is invalid. I think that I was tricked. I think that um, I think that that was kind of a cheap thing. I mean, maybe a lot of it. Sure, you can look at it now and be like, it's obvious it was a trick candle. But I mean, this was the 90s. <laughs> I had never seen that before, you know? <laughs> so I thought it was real. I, No one told me otherwise. They were just like, yes, that's Jesus. That's what that is. So I took what they explained it to me as, as, as truth. Just like the Easter Bunny. Just like Santa. Like, we accept those things as truth because we're told that as an impressionable age. At a time, we would believe it anyway. So... Uh, it was so that that was the childhood. And then as I started realizing that God wasn't going to help me, um, I just kind of needed a way to cope and not having any kind of faith, at least for someone like me, isn't uh, isn't very conducive to like mental health. I'm the kind of person that's got to believe in something, you know, bigger than me. Otherwise, I'm like, nihilism isn't where it's at for me, you know, like, <laughs> that's scary. That's scary to me. That's scarier than like the heaven and hell thing. Like, at least I know where I'm going. <laughs> if that's the case, I'd rather it be that than nothing. I don't know what nothing is. I don't know how to experience nothing. So that scares me. So um, I'm trying to find some kind of some kind of faith, something to believe in, something to genuinely believe in and not like something, oh, that seems cool. I'm going to start believing in that. I'm looking for something that's like, oh, I believe that, right? So um, I've told you this before, but like I, though my, my mom was a single mom and she was my abuser, I do compartmentalize her as my mother. She was the abuser and she was also my mother and when she was my mother she was really fucking cool she was a cool mom when she wasn't abusing me you know yeah so um like i got good grades and she let me get my lip pierced like that was the deal she said you come home with straight a's i'll let you get your lip pierced she did and this was this one and i still have it to this day and i'm never getting rid of it because i earned that shit <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> right so um i was talking to her about this about like do you believe in god and she was like honestly no <laughs> I've never been Christian. That was your grandmother's deal. Like, I never really believed in that stuff. And I was like, well, I guess I don't either, really, because it doesn't make sense to me. And she was like, OK, that's fair. Uh, do you believe do you believe in anything? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I want to find out. And she was like, OK, well, you know, let's go to the library. Let's I'll check some. We'll get your library card. We'll check some books out for you. I just want to make sure that I check the books first. She didn't want me getting into any like Satanism shit. Or like that dark, crazy stuff. So um, she wanted to uh, read over the books first before she let me read them full through. And um, I found, I came across like paganism, Wicca. And that kind of made sense to me because the, the idea of reincarnation made sense to me. That's like where it started. Because after after learning, you know, in eighth grade biology that matter cannot be created or destroyed, then you're like, where does my matter go? And it or ener energy cannot be created or destroyed. Excuse me. So you're like, where does my energy go? Like, I, what is a soul if not energy? Like, I don't know. Nobody really knows what a soul is if a soul is a thing um, or consciousness or whatever you want to call it. Like, where does my consciousness go? It's such a complex thing. There's no way that it's just gone. You know, it's, I, in my beliefs anyway. Um, if I'm ever speaking in a, in a way that seems like I'm speaking in it, like it's a fact, I just mean 
just I, I just mean like as far as my beliefs go. I, I feel like I'm about the same thing. Like <laughs> yeah, I think, so like, like we're both talking about like it's a very sensitive thing, and we're like out here like explaining this stuff to you guys about how we feel, so you guys understand where our hearts are at. So our right. hearts are in a good place, and we would never say something that would like offend somebody or condemn anybody else ever. Satanists are actually pretty cool, but that was like my mom. You know, my mom was like, "You're not gonna be worshiping Satan." Anyway, shout out to the Satanist. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, oh yeah. So reincarnation. So I was like, yeah, that makes sense to me. Like, if energy cannot be created or destroyed, then that makes sense that a soul would be recycled. Like, my consciousness would be recycled into another living thing. Like, what? Be a human or a slug or what? Well, I don't know. Water bear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, so that that brought me a lot of comfort because, like I said, the end, like nothing is scary to me. So thinking that when I die, I will be again is very comforting to me, especially as someone with a chronic illness and me thinking that I'm going to die every bad asthma attack that I have. Um, you know, I face my mortality a lot and being comforted in those times are kind of really important <laughs> for me. So um, that was kind of where it started. And I've always been like, my sun sign's a cancer and my rising's is a uh, Sagittarius. So I've always been like emotional and adventurous and I really liked being outside and I loved being barefoot. So the thought that like outside was also like something sacred you know like I'm more connected to something I'm connected to something bigger to to the spirit that is mother earth when I'm barefoot out there like the reason I feel so good out there is because I'm connected to like all the spirits that make up everything that brought me comfort and because I also didn't have friends (laughs) and so when I went outside I would talk to the trees because that brought me comfort because I thought I would be like essentially praying in a way you know like speaking to the deities that make up nature (laughs) and um that 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 truly clicked with me and um my mom was supportive of that and she really vibed with that and she would buy me things that I needed like herbs and crystals and things that I needed to make little spell jars and stuff and um I'm the and the, those are the beliefs that I carry to this day. I, I'm I'm still I'm less practicing. I don't really practice anymore, um, if not solely for the fact that I live with my partner, Tim, and he comes from though he himself is not religious. He comes from a very religious family. His father is a um, Episcopal uh, preacher who is currently going through seminary to complete his religious degree and um yeah they're very accepting people oh they love me so much I love them so much they're the they're the best people I've ever I've ever met (laughs) that have been so religious you know they're the best religious people I've met in person and accepted me from the jump like it was wonderful anyway before I cry um (laughs) Uh, because I live with Tim, I feel like a lot of these, pra- like, he doesn't know what, like, me crushing eggshells in a jar. He's just like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want, like, him to be like, why are all these candles? Why is, why is there a pentagram shape in salt and rose petals with candles melting in the kitchen? And I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, like, I... <laughs> I'm trying not to freak him out, especially in our small little space, you know, so um, I'm much less practicing. I do little things for me here and there, like that don't take up space, like burning a bay leaf with a wish on it or something and burying the ashes, you know, those things I can do pretty under the radar and not feel self-conscious about it. Um, 
and ho- hopefully when we get a bigger place, I'll, I'll have the, the space that I need to practice comfortably and not be in his face about it. You know, I, cause I also think that I, th- I don't know. Churches are cool. I really like how churches look. Um, and I like the idea of the community and stuff, but I never really thought of religion as something that should be public like that. It seems like it should just be the private thing. And I'm pretty sure the Bible says that somewhere too, like something about flaunting in public or. Oh my gosh. Nobody likes those people. Nobody enjoys those people. I'm not. No, no, thank you. Exactly. So (laughs) I just, um, you know, I believe what I believe and I keep it to myself and uh, it keeps me my skin clear and I'm hydrated and thriving, you know, thriving, living my good life. (laughs) Absolutely. So so that's, that's like, uh, that's where I am now. Just a witchy guy. Now you, me, you on the other hand, you're another, you're the other side of the coin there. I am the other side of the coin. After I just shit talked basically your whole religion. How about you? Uh, No, man, I can Let's... take it. I am, I am, that's totally fine. Everybody does their own thing. I am not religious. I, I hate even saying that what I believe in is even a religion because it's, it's not, I mean, oh, I just hate that. I hate that word. Nobody likes that word. Um, yeah. At least in my experience. So, like, obviously, I am not like a biblical person to the point to where. I probably know a lot more than your average trans guy or your average LGBT person. That's probably true because I had, you know, the three days a week thing. But I'm not Mm. um, I'm not a scholar in these things. So what I do know, my limited knowledge and my experience is what I'll be talking about. And uh, yeah, that's my preface is that I I, I I'm not going to sit here and spit verses with you. Someone else was called to do that. It's not me. Right. (laughs) to handle that that's fine but um that's just not where I think spit I'm your verses in the comments for me <laughs> not for me is my point <laughs> not for me yeah um, yeah so i did want to start with that i think um yeah so if i had to throw a label on it yeah i would be christianity or being a christian i suppose um and i guess that starts in louisiana i i was born in new york but i was raised in louisiana um with a pretty heavy influence of God uh, with my Nana, like my Nana enjoyed going to church. Um, I, I loved how happy it made her going to church and like seeing how her she would sing and just like like her and my great grandmother, like both of them were just so involved with the Lord and it was just, it was cool to see them be happy about something. Like it's like, oh, that, it, mm-hmm. like, that makes them happy. That like, I bet that could make me happy the same way. Like, so I would just listen right. to them and kind of like, go, like, go off of what they would do and things and my nana uh we've got wonderful memories of like going to sonic after youth church every wednesday and uh and and i think i was able to learn how to find solace i guess Mm -hmm. in god um at a young age like when things are crazy like you can take a deep breath and close your eyes and talk to him like that was just something that i was taught early i guess and thank God I was because uh, it, it was it, it helped me more than I thought it would. Um, so I'm like I, the the churches that I would go to, the church that I went to with my nan on Wednesdays. Um, mm-hmm. That's where I like technically like accepted the Lord into my heart and Savior. Like that whole like what's supposed is to be that like, when you got baptized or or like communion right yeah like so, so okay. I was like okay like I I pledge my life to the Lord and then they baptize you and and this oh, thing okay. I was really young I it was it was a lot of the same thing of like the this is a big deal sweetie this is why this is a big deal I'm like seven eight years old at the time like i'm like oh you, you know so you're just like you're getting i'm getting yeah. put in all those dresses and like everyone's yeah like, you can't you look at that beautiful. point are you really making the decision or is it to appease, appease your family seriously and i had that same feeling i was like you know like this is a big deal okay like okay this is a big deal all right then it is you know if they say it is, right. it is. so you know you're like oh like i got baptized blah 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 but um no we in our we weren't very um we weren't, we, it wasn't, we weren't like hateful about it, which was cool. My Nana and my grandma, my, my gram, they were never hateful about anything, which was nice to see, which was refreshing. Um, nice. My Nana kind of explained to me like 
from a young age that he was always with me and things that I that that if I needed him he'd be there and I guess I just mm -hmm. didn't know really how much that was gonna mean so like a literally a few years after a few years like during this and after and about a year or two after this uh, it, it got a little bananas um, we you know we were we experienced a great deal of loss we had been homeless um, I had been honest with my mom about some abuse and she straight up told me I was a liar um, and, and oh yeah and stayed with him t and um, it was a it was a whole it was a whole fiasco there's a lot of stuff um, <coughs> probably about a year less than a year after this uh was that's when hurricane <coughs> katrina had hit in louisiana um, oh fuck Aaron. yeah dude <laughs> so we evacuated and came back after it was safe to do so came back everything's destroyed we're like crap we gotta start over um oh, shit. i was nine yeah my dad my dad had like my dad had hit it as hit, had like hit his knees and bawling like crying to the lord in this point and I, it's just something about seeing, like, your hero of a parent at the time, you know, on their knees bawling, like, asking why God would do this to us. Um, and that was a really emotional thing to see and to watch. So we kind of had to start fresh. And my dad had some family. How did that, how did that make you feel, like, nine years old? all that is happening and then the person that's supposed to keep you safe is yeah praying like that that must yeah. have been super scary it was it was terrifying it really was i i go fast over it because it's it's something that i've like talked about i've talked about like a lot of times between therapy and people and things like that but it's still mm -hmm. it's still like holds extra it's oxygen tough. in there of course it's and it, yeah. and it always will be i mean that's i think all trauma situations do that for for anyone um, so at that point we're like, we'll start fresh. My dad had family in Oregon. So my dad scooped us up and took us to his side of the family and we're like, yes, we'll meet them. Like maybe they'll be cool. Like they're going to let us stay there until we get back on our feet. Um, mm -hmm. so we rerouted in Oregon. We found a new church that seemed like close to our previous one, like the same, like upbeat music, you know, like more of a modern vibe that my dad, you know, had liked and connected to, I guess. Um, but mm -hmm. we didn't really know where they were, like how, how much hate was like rooted in the church, at least at the time. I mean, mind you, this is 10 years ago, but, um, but it was, it was, it was tough. Uh, it just, yeah. I'm, I'm, so I matured in this church, and I started to sense my feelings toward women. So like I, when I when we started going mm. to that church, it was like nine, all the way up till I was like my probably my junior year, I think it was. So from nine mm -hmm. years old to my junior year in high school. So I had matured in this church, like finding out who I was, like how I felt about women, and all these all these things, and. Um, I started to discover those feelings and I started to realize that the Bible had like a thousand percent contradicted that in every way, shape or form. And it like everywhere I could find it was that, I, you know, you're going to hell. You know, that's just what it is. Uh, you know, the Bible says like, you know, everyone uses that verse to like smack each other around with. They may not, it's an abomination or whatever. Um, so they, so I, I was seeing these words in the Bible that went connected to this being above that had brought me a lot of peace throughout throughout those hard times in Louisiana in the bathroom by myself closing my eyes like pretty much having a panic attack I could close my eyes and talk to like talk to God like Nana had taught me and it would give me mm -hmm. peace so in that sense I had, that was my experience with the Lord that I knew was a fact like, from that point on, I, like, knew, like, that was my experience. Like, what I do know is that in that moment, I could be a mess. And I was, like, I mean, I'm, like, less than 10 years old. I, I'm in the bathroom by myself. Like, I could be a mess, and I could, like, quiet myself and pray and, like, talk to God. Mm -hmm. And it would just relax me. And I'm, like, okay, that's, like, okay, so I know that's a thing that exists. That's, like, a fact that will never change about my beliefs mm -hmm. is that I can find that so far anyways right. that piece but this bible yeah. is saying that everything about my natural feelings towards women that i'm starting to feel myself be attracted to women more than men when i when i'm supposed to be feeling this way towards towards men 
Right. Um, it was just really confusing. And so I said, well, obviously this is wrong. Then I need to pray this away. Like this, if, if what they're saying in church is true, then this mm-hmm. is what I'm, what I'm feeling is the devil pulling me towards his layer and using me to take out other people in the process. That's pretty much what it was taught in my church about, you know, the LGBT community in general. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm like, no, we're not doing this. I am going to pray this away. I'm going to write F-R-O-G on my wrist, faithfully relying on God. Frog. Frog. <laughs> frog. No one else would know what frog. I'm talking about. So oh, my ha- God. They just thought that you really liked frogs. <laughs> telling them i mean that was my that was my like okay like i had my first crush and every time i would think about her i would look at that on my wrist and be like that's absolutely i rebuke that in the name of jesus move on like really i mean i was really focused on this between probably between sixth and eighth sixth and eighth grade like middle school that was my focus i mean i was reading the bible on my on the on the city bus on the way to school like Mm -hmm. reading it before school reading on my lunch like reading time like i was just trying to get this to go away and as i developed a relationship with this with my first crush my first real relationship she had also shared the exact same fears as me uh, mm-hmm. You know, she goes to church. She's Christian. She knows that, you know, that this isn't allowed. Like, like she is like having the same problem as me. Like, I'm, I'm feeling connected to you. Like, I'm attracted to you. Like, it's at this point, it had been like over a year or two of us praying and trying not to be together. Oh my god, and that's heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, it was a mess. It really was. And I think after a while, after a year of two of going through that three days a week, reading my Bible constantly, I realized that feeling like wasn't fading. So I'm like, why would he make me this way and make, after all this time, but also condemn me to go, I'm like, that's not making sense. So something's not right. That like these, the, right. the, like the game, the two truths and a lie. That's what it felt like. Like my truth was that I knew that I could find peace in him. Uh, I knew the lie was that I, I just didn't know where the lie was. Like, am I lying to myself saying that, like, this is fine? But, I mean, it was a whole process, and it took it took a lot of, like, in-depth, like, realization. And my realization came probably a year before hers, a year or two before hers. So with her staying in the closet, me and being so out of the closet, it, it, we, we naturally grew apart of like your first relationship always does. But it, yeah. it was it, that was our first real shock of being like, okay, this is okay, God's not getting rid of this. We both have this right. feeling. Well, like we just decided, I just decided to choose that God must have he like he, I, I, he didn't make mistakes so he didn't make a mistake in me wanting women because i was made this way i am not a mistake i mean there's there's just so many pieces to the puzzle that you really have to put together and it's so hard to do that <clears throat> especially when you're less than 18 years old and you're going yeah. through your own trauma and abuse of different yeah. ways and it's just it's not fun so um i as i was putting these pieces together i started to get more comfortable with my feelings for women i was like i can love god i can be myself and find peace those are the two things mm-hmm. i know for a fact about myself i like women and i like and i can find that peace so i'm like i mean mm-hmm. if, if everything else like this is supposed to be exactly my relationship with god and not about everyone else and everyone at the church would do the whole dancing and the, the screaming and the, the talking and, to- and the dancing around and like for the attention stuff and i and i yeah i was like i would if i was in the bathroom at church and i could barely hear the music i could find more peace with god than in that whole room with all those people yep. trying to show off to each other and it was i was just yep. not about it so as yeah. I put those pieces together and I started to feel more confident in myself, the church started realizing that I was living openly in sin and um, was worried that I was discouraging others from the from the narrow path. <laughs> um, oh, my God. <laughs> I, would, I, would, like, I would let them know that 
you're feeling that too, that's okay because I am. And since I said it out loud, I got in trouble. But so you shouldn't say it out oh loud. My God. So it was kind of like they used me as like the example to set that this is not acceptable. Um, uh, oh my God! Yeah. Iconic. I know. I know. It was, it was freaking mean. I mean, my dad like scheduled a. I mean, it's it, my at the time my dad scheduled a meeting with me to talk to the pastor about like trying to talk some sense into me like like what are you feeling like it's normal for like like you would talk to your pastor like the closest person to the lord that we could get to right. to talk some sense it just it didn't work so i um I, my dad went on to found another church uh because of all of the craziness that went on with me i i didn't i visited many lgbt friendly church spaces um since mm -hmm. my time there like those are the places that i felt comfortable going into to even try um, mm -hmm. and, and those were pretty cool. I found some pretty safe spaces since then being 18 and grown and being able to drive myself to church where I want to go to church and up to me. So yeah. I have felt some, spe uh, like definitely there are some LGBT safe spaces, um, but they're few and far between, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately. so I've, I've been on both sides of the coin. I've been, I've been the kid that needed that everyone's trying to shove into conversion therapy. You know, I've, I've been the, the church example where they're like, you're getting out of here. Like, we're not going to, we don't accept this. Like, that's ridiculous. I felt the, like the condemnation of like, you're going to hell. doesn't matter how much you like her. It doesn't matter how much, how much you make, you guys make each other happy or none of that matters. If these scriptures were just smacking each other around with, and I think a lot of the times where I had got caught up before, even on the first time we recorded this episode, was about the Bible and like how like I have a complicated relationship with with the Bible and I found myself running into all these kind of like red lights in the last episode that I needed to like soak on. So really mm -hmm. the what after thinking, I think for my for myself, I use the Bible for a a guide I use the Bible to help me if I'm going through a time where I feel like I need guidance so mm -hmm. if I feel like I'm just like I'm so stuck like right now like my mother is in a terrible situation and this is just garbage I feel like I can do nothing blah 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 then I will look for something about patience and like leaving it up to God or like leaving it like realizing that there's nothing I can do about it like those kinds of things like I will look mm -hmm. I will look for the devotions that you hadn't previously mentioned but right but when it came to the laws of the scripture of of the the shrimp and the you can't cut your hair but now you can cut your hair and and all this complicated stuff in the Bible like about religion and condemnation with like homosexuals and all the translations that are have gone around i just i feel like people use the bible which is a very like there's they were written by every book was written by a different person and you're reading a different right. translation from someone else and it, and right. it, there's no way to va validate that jesus wrote this and told us to like here you go this is the so i i struggled and i i went back and forth with like do i believe what the bible like do i believe that jesus died on the cross for my sins i i do because that's what i was taught but in the sense that the bible i, I all i can speak to really is my relationship with god and what mm -hmm. and wh how i've felt in his in in my experience i don't yeah I, 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 I don't use the Bible in the sense that I'm like using it. I hate people using it to hurt others, but you can use the Bible in the sense of it like a guide or like a like a reference book for some guidance like you would yeah like you it would should be for. it should be like a self-help book exactly not like. Not like a, a history book. I mean, there there are poems in this book. Like, there's beautifully written poems that have nothing to do with hatefulness and, like, all these, like, th throwing, like, just all this violence and just, all, like, there's, there's peaceful parts of the Bible that I think that, like, no one really focuses on because they're not the controversial pieces. And mm -hmm. those peaceful pieces are what 
have I have held on to to get a lot of uh, to get through a lot of crazy crap. So, do am I trans? Yeah. Do I cuss? Yeah. Do I believe in God? Yeah. Am I Christian? Yeah. So like that's just what it's about. That's just how I feel. That's my yeah. belief, based on my experience. I mean, I'm sure we'll pick apart over the many episodes of this podcast are both of our like experiences and uh different beliefs and different experiences and traumas and all those things i'm sure we'll get into Mm. more details about those but but those things make us who we are and yeah now what what you said about um how we people get caught up with the bible and like there's all these different translation translations that's that's one of the things that got it for me too where i was like this is silly Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because once i learned that like king george made his own version so that he could be able to have multiple wives no so that he could be able to divorce his wife because at the time he couldn't divorce his wife and she couldn't bear him children so like it's just like a bunch of these rich white dudes writing rewrote it right rewrote it paid translators to say certain things about it to fit their own narrative wow sounds familiar and um I saw a while ago, I I actually just looked it up, that uh, has the word homosexual always been in the Bible? Like, does it really say that, like, it's a sin to be gay? And scholars have found that it it was the word, um, the word, I'm probably going to say this wrong because it's, like, in Greek, um, (laughs) arsenokoitai. Yes. Arsenokoitai or something. It was like miss it was it shows up in two verses of the Bible, um, but it was not translated to mean homosexual until 1946. Mm. And um, later it was found that. Um, oh, do, 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 do. So we went to Leviticus 1822 and he's translating it for me word for word. In the English where it says man shall not lie with man for it is an abomination The German version says, man shall not lie with young boys as he does with a woman, for it is an abomination. Um, This is talking to Ed Oxford, one of the translators. And uh, the journalist says, what, are you sure? And he says, yes. And then went to Leviticus 2013. Same thing, young boys. So we went to 1 Corinthians to see how they translated arsenokoitai, which is the original Greek word. And instead of homosexuals, it says boy molesters will not inherit the kingdom of God. So it seems like they were condemning pedophilia instead of homosexuality. I've but also heard, I've also heard that when they're talking about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, um, that like how they were condemning the whole city and how they were talking about I was like raving with homosexuals, but that's the same. I've, I've heard that same. That same yeah, it was pedophiles. Pedophiles. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. And, you know, it would kind of also make sense that all these like white Christian politicians feel this way, feel good about this kind of translation of the Bible, because what are a lot of them? getting charges for recently i mean come on Pedophilia. <laughs> i mean come on y'all do your research the, the, the whole like the research. jeffrey epstein thing come on there's like some, <laughs> there's a lot of things that needed need to be addressed for sure in the church. why is it that why is it that the most there's like a way more like catholic christian ratio to pedophilia than any other religion Dude, like for real it's not it's, it's insane not uh, it's it's not I, cool, and it's a shame. Yeah. It makes every it makes every person look awful. Like it makes like it makes it to where I mean you're like almost like in those situations you're like yeah I'm a Christian. They're like like for me yeah. to say that I, like out loud they're like what that's like saying you're an oxymoron. Like yeah, it, it, you can't be trans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christian. You can't be gay and Christian. Like that's not how yeah. it works. Like I hated how after after Tim told me how his dad was like, you know, a preacher or whatever, finding out how religious they are, I immediately got tight butthole scared, you know, oh. like clenched my cheeks. Like I'm like, oh, fuck, <laughs> I'm going to meet them. They're going to be like super sweet because they have to be, but they're going to misgender me the whole time. No, and then when I leave. Yeah, no. Right. No, they were perfect. And I, hate, you know. 
it just sucks that they ruin it for everybody else. Seriously. But, so many, you know, and it um, seems like there's a lot of people. Like, it's so funny that you said that because, like, we start when we first started this episode, you were saying that you were like, no, if Tim's family as a preacher, they're like amazing people, and like, they other people give yes. them bad reps. And I feel the same way about like my Nana and my Graham. Like, I mean, my Nana, me and my Nana have come overcame our own our own things together, but but at the end of the Love day, Nana. Sh- Nana is the the my mom and dad in one person when nobody else wanted to do it. You know what I mean? So she yeah. she deserves credit where it's due, and uh, and we just um yeah we just learn. Yeah, I don't even know. What I was we thinking. love Nana. We love Nana. That's all. It is. It's fine. We love Nana so much. So yeah, I wanted to. Um, I I said this in the last episode, but I actually think it's a good thing to go out on because it's super funny, and this episode was kind of heavy. Yeah. So um, it won't all be this heavy, but we wanted to make sure. Like, <laughs> yeah. No. I just you know talk about anything. Every once in a while, let's let's have some substance. You know, Spice we're not just a couple up. bimbos who look good. We're not just showing you our <laughs> tape every day. Come on, guys. Right. There's more about <laughs> us than our amazing trans tape applications. <laughs> So, okay, this was after I've discovered, you know, what my beliefs are. Mm-hmm. Me and my best friend in high school. Um, <laughs> I feel like I should keep the church's name and also her name out of it, like just in case. I don't know. Just in case. Um, <laughs> just in case. You know, let's just let's just keep it. You know, nonchalant. Um, so my best friend at the time. I basically lived at her house when I was in school. She yeah. was my only friend and also the only people my mom trusted with me. Her uh, her family was like freaking loaded, loaded because her dad was in the military. He was a pilot. Uh, and um, wow. yeah, so they could afford to and they had three kids. So I was just the fourth kid. Basically, I would spend two weeks straight at their house. I would bring my computer and, you know, computer computers weren't so portable back then. It was like the big <laughs> cathode ray monitor, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> and the fucking the big ass Dell tower that weighed more than me everything brought it there they would um anyway so I basically lived there and they, you know uh if I was there over a weekend on a Sunday they decided to go to church they didn't go to church every Sunday but like sometimes um the dad would decide that they were going to church that Sunday so I would go with them right. and um oh it was Palm Sunday it was Palm Sunday oh. I believe that was the event. Palm Sunday was fun because I got to do little crafts with the little palm fronds. And I learned how to make a little origami cross with the Ooh. palm fronds. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. And also, I like feeling like I'm part of a cult, you know, with the ash on my forehead. Like, hey, happy Ash Wednesday. Like, you're part of the cult, too, I see. Yes, yes. Your forehead's looking mighty clean there, sir. <laughs> Didn't go to service today, I see, on this holy day. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Wow. So we're at church. We're at church on Palm Sunday. And I don't know what to do. There's, like, all this choreography going on. Like, before they sit down, they kneel on one knee, and then they do the, you know, the the Macarena. Um, What's it called? And then they find the... (laughs) But, For the podcast you know, viewers that can't see what Bo is doing, it's the um, the head. To it's the, the macarena, the, left, the holy the right. macarena. The the T. Y'all know what we're talking about. Yeah, right? the T. The Father, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Now they know. know. Okay. Um, to uh, spe- spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I've never heard that. The, that's how I remembered it. Spectacles, cause, and then your testicles are down there. Uh huh. Your wallet, your wallet's over here, and then you watch. Because this is your wrist. Oh. You know? So t- spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> we're at that. church on Palm Sunday. I never forget it now. <laughs> and I and um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so, it's okay. So, we're doing the th- Everybody's doing the thing. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, and it's all very, it's all very, like, solemn and quiet. Like, no one's saying a goddamn thing. And even whispering is, like, too loud, you know? Mm. And so I'm like, what do I do? Like, to my best friend, I'm like, what, 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 what? And, she's, and she says, just do what everybody else does. Just follow everybody else. Whoever is in front of you next to you, just do what everybody else does. And I was like, okay, cool. I can do that. So the okay. guy is getting sit, sit in front of me. She, she, my best friend does the thing. She kneels down, does the Macarena and then sits down. So I do what I kneel down. I do the Macarena. I sit down and then, you know, then they pull down the knee pad and then everybody gets down on the knee pad and starts doing this. So I'm like, okay, all right, let me get down on my knees. I'm start doing this, praying, you know, <laughs> 
And I just, I just like keep my head down and I keep looking up at my best friend, like waiting for her to be done. And then, oh, okay, we're done praying. Yep, yep, that was a good pray. <laughs> and <laughs> then every, they go through the service. Everybody says, you know, amen. <laughs> and like, may, may peace be with you and with your spirit. And like, and this is a Catholic you shake hands. Service, correct? Yeah. Okay. And then you shake hands with your neighbor, and then you say, "Peace be with you. May peace be with you. May peace be with you. Oh, and and with your sp- and with your spirit, and with yours." And it's just very, it's very strange. And then, and then it's it, like you uh, take in communion. I guess is what it is. The cracker and the juice. Yes. And then it's time to take the cracker and the juice. This was the moment I was waiting for. I knew about the cracker and the juice. So when my best friend said to me, "You know, do what everybody else does." I'm, but I just follow the people going up to do communion. They have their, like, some of them have their arms crossed like this across their shoulder and they're walking up to the line, you know? And then the lady who gives you the cracker says, do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You say yes, and then you get the cracker, okay? So that's what everyone was doing. She asked me if I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. <laughs> and I said, I said, sure, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I said, sure. And then I was like, I should be more enthusiastic. And then I said, yeah. But it came out like, sure, like super yeah. fast. So I was like, sure, sure yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, what? This is great. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so she looked like she saw a ghost. And then she begrudgingly handed me the cracker. She didn't put it on my tongue, though, which is what she did with everybody else whose hands were crossed. So maybe that's where it all went wrong. (laughs) And then she just like handed it to me and I was like, oh, okay. I uncrossed my hands and then I ate it. And then it went over to the juice man and I learned my lesson this time. And he was like, do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And I was like, yes. I said it calmly. Yes. Yes, I do. And then I took a sip of the juice. And um, this was pre-COVID. This was pre-COVID. There was a single cup and he was wiping with a napkin. Just a dry napkin. (laughs) It was post like COVID. It tastes like crap. <laughs> I mean, but but post COVID communion, I'm sure is way different. Like everybody probably has separate cups. <laughs> yeah. So um, thinking about that now kind of freaks me out. But so I took the juice and then I sit down and my best friend has already finished going through everything. And I sit down and I'm so proud of myself because I did it all. I did I everything that everybody else was doing. <laughs> I did it. I did the choreography. And then I sit down next to my best friend. My best friend's like, what did you do? And I was like, what? I did whatever. I did what you told me to do. I did what everybody else was doing. You got up and left. Everybody else was. What? So I got up and got. And then she said, because I wasn't a member of that church and I wasn't like baptized, I couldn't take communion at that church. And I was like, what am I? Am I going to hell? Like, is that? (laughs) I took, I'm unbaptized and I took communion at a church I didn't go to. What the, why didn't you tell me I was in danger of damning my immortal soul by just taking a cracker and drinking some juice? I'm going to fucking hell over this? Like, I didn't sign up for this. How are you guys still friends to this day? I need to know. We're you, still you friends. Were yeah. able, you were she able to get over me. that, that, that uh, condemnation. I, I forgave her. I, I forgave her <laughs> for allowing me to damn my immortal soul. So, um, yeah, that's that's how I damned my immortal soul. And that's how it all <laughs> began. <laughs> yeah. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> Next time, we will be talking about maybe something that you drop in the comments. Make sure that you're subscribing. We are on Apple Podcasts. We are on Spotify. 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 Tell your friends. uh, Token Trans. We're on social. We'll talk to you very soon. Bye. Bye now.